Okay, we back. We back on the, you know, the 24th. This is the uh, last Saturday in February. And um, I thank God for February because it, it, it shows some some things that I wanted to see. And, uh, but this is uh this is this is interesting. Now we're gonna get to understand the spiritual Babylon today, and we are also going to understand that economic system, spiritual economic system, the economic system. He talks about the great harlot, which he that's how they talk about prostitute and whore. He that's who God, that's how God talks to us because uh, the, the earth, the world, you know. So I, you know, I want to get started. I want to just show you know I'm keeping this picture up there because this is an iconic picture that um, you know, the daughter, the grandmother, and the granddaughter um, is really, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, you can look at it. That's the next generation that's coming up, and hopefully, I won't be here during the tribulation. But let's start off with a word of prayer, and then we're gonna get right into what we need to get into. This is this is fantastic, chapter seventeen. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the praise, and we get all the honor, and we thank you for getting this past chapter sixteen. You 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 finished. You said it's done. Now we get to see what's done and what's finished. And we get to see the dragon again. We get to see the beast or the, you know, the harlot, the great harlot of Babylon. We get to we get to try to delve into those things through your word and, and get some more clarity and understanding as to your love. That you don't want to see anybody perish, but uh, you get you when 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 there's uh, adversity, you go have uh, either we gonna run to you or run away from you, <laughs> one of the two. And we give you all the praise as we get started because we need, I'm anxious to get started to see what you have uh, taught me. You said, "Seek and you shall find, and knock, and it shall be open to you." So I'm seeking and knocking, Lord. Those who are listening, they seeking and knocking. So we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I'm full. You know, I'm not always full, but I'm full now. And let us share our screen. Let's get right to it. And uh, let's get right to the lesson. It is powerful. It is powerful. It is powerful. Uh, in the beginning, God, I'm always going to start there because we have to start at a point that he, it's where it started. And they, I say, Almighty Jesus said, you know, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So the book of Revelation, the unveiling, the blessing, the revealing of the Almighty Jesus. It's just that simple. It's not, it's, this is not hard. The purpose of the book of Revelation was to, basically is to encourage the saints. Looking at um, the revealing of Jesus. You know, we, uh, you know, whether you won this, Trinity, you know, we got that fight on the earth right now. Um, what I what I believe is what I'm taught. And what I'm taught, I'm taught by the Spirit of God. Uh, I'm just saying, oh, Christ Almighty Jesus. The revealing of past, current, future, literal, prophetic events that's going to happen in the earth. Oh, let's go to blessings in Christ Jesus. Suffering question. Why do we suffer? Is answered. Is it all in this book? The key to times of suffering is always faith, is in the book. And then knowing that pain and suffering has an expiration date, and we saw it last week in chapter 60, he said it is finished, it's done. It's done. You know, it's not having not taken place, it's done, but it's done in the in the heavens. It's already done. It's finished. You know, we're getting ready to get up some more pleasant chapters, but we have to finish these and, and do some definitions of what what is what this all means when people say I'm not reading Revelation because I don't understand it. So we're gonna try to break it down for you. Today we're getting to the great mystery. The tribulation, God's wrath is done. It's done. Okay. 
You know, by the, yeah, if you stay stick with the word of God, the word defines itself. It's not coming out of the mouth of uh, just somebody just rambling on saying, I'm this and I'm that. He said the great mystery. He, in chapter 17, is called the great mystery. Who is the mother of all the harlots and abominations of the earth? We're going to answer that after we wrap up this thing. I still, I told you, I'm gonna keep this picture up here because I like this picture because it it shows a uh, concern, like a child, concern, hugging, hugging, hugging this this bear. That's a that's a beautiful picture, full of love, like the father. So we are gonna continue on. Let's let's continue this thing on. Okay, now one of the angels, now we passed chapter 16. 16 already says finish the bowls of pork. Now, one of the angels that had to, who had the seven bowls, one of the angels, I don't know which one it was, they came and spoke to John, okay, to me as John, and saying, uh, Come with me, and I will show you the doom, okay, the sentence. Here we go, the sentence. In the judge. There's only 18 verses in this, this chapter. And it's really a culmination of chapter 17 and 18. You go, it's gonna be piecemeal, but that's why I like to take my time so you get some understanding. We're all getting good understanding and some wisdom. He said, Who have wisdom? Yeah, God's wisdom. We're gonna get into that later. Once we leave here, we're gonna go into silence. This, this is a long, long time. I'm talking about it's gonna take about three years to go through Proverbs and and uh and Psalms, we're gonna teach you how to pray. We're gonna teach you something. He says, he said, look at that. He says, these sentence of the great harlot, the idolatrous, the one who sits, who is seated in many waters, okay? She, you know, ain't talking about a literal she, some spiritual she, okay? He talking about we, we, we find it because women are producers, you know, they, they want to bring babies to the, they produce things. This this great harlot, this great prostitute, okay, this idolatrous, we're going to get into it. This great whore, okay, whom, join, whom the rulers join. Look, the rulers of the earth, this is a religious piece, and we're going to get into the, uh, the other piece next week, the Lord will. Join in prostitution. Idolatry is prostitution. With the wine of whose immorality, which is prostitution, the inhabits the inhabitants of the earth has become intoxicated. See, this is tribulation period. Now the church is gone at this point. Okay, now this is the tribulation. Now he's gonna try to get, he's gonna put it together because he just don't want you to be without, he don't want you to be ignorant. God don't want you to be in spirit of God, don't want you to be. And then the angel bored me up, he bored me away. See, bored me away, bored me away, and wrapped in, look, in the spirit, the Almighty G, into a desert. He wrapped him, what he wrapped, he bored him away into a Look what he said. He bored him away. An angel. The angel. Okay. Bored him. Bored me away. Bored me away. He wrapped into a desert of wilderness. Okay. And I saw a woman. Okay. Now he's showing him something. Look. He saw a woman seated on a scarlet beast. Okay. That was all covered with blasphemous titles. Okay, names. And, and he had seven heads. This 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 beast had seven heads and ten horns. We're gonna get back to it. We're gonna break this down at the end, but we're not gonna break it down now. And the woman was robed. Look at the world, purple, scarlet, and decked in gold and precious stones and and pearls. And she was holding her in her hand a golden cup full of a, a cursed, offensive, and filth of lewdness and vice. 
and her forehead, there was an inscribed name of mystery with a secret symbolic meaning, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, idolatrous, just of the filth, let me say filth, and atrocities and abomination of the earth. Okay? We, we gonna break that down in a minute, but we need you to start reading this thing to get it into your spirit. And notice up here, though, you say gold, precious stones. It never say gold and silver. Silver is redemption. And I saw the woman drunk. Okay, what are you drunk? She's drunk. The woman's drunk. With the blood of the saints. Uh, that's why I say atrocities. Of God, almighty Jesus' people. In the blood of the martyrs who who witnessed for Jesus. And when I saw, and when I saw her, I was utterly, I was utterly amazed. He was amazed and he wondered greatly. Because he didn't know, but you know, John looking at this beast with the blood of the saints, she's dripping with the blood of the saints. And he she's got all these titles, these. The symbolic type, she's a prostitute, filth, she atrocities, abomination. She's the abomination. She's back. Got this person Babylon. And there's some history behind that. And it goes all the way back to chapter 10. But I mean chapter 10 of, of Genesis. We're gonna we gonna we're gonna discuss briefly with that because I want to give you too much, but I want you to read. I want you to get used to reading. They got 10 horns. Look, they got seven heads and 10 horns that carry her. Mm. He said. And no, he said, but the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will explain to you the secret. I'm going to explain it, but you still ain't going to understand. The symbolic meaning of the mystery of the woman, as well as the beast. Having the seven heads and ten horns and carried her, and it carries her. Okay, carries her. The beast you saw. Now he's gonna explain the beast first, because then John can I, the beast you saw was you notice the beast is really you know that's the dragon, the beast, you know, that's what his name. He's gonna tell him where it came from. And say, the beast you saw once was, but now is no more. And he's going to come up out of the abyss, the bottom of his pit, so you know where he is. And proceed to go to perdition. We're gonna go out. And the inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been, he's talking about inhabitants of the earth, six, six, six people who have names have not been written, who took the mark of the beast. I'm putting that in there so you get some understanding. Has not been recorded in the book of life from the foundation of the world. They have been, see, God knows who's here from the foundation of the world will be astonished when they look at the beast because he was, he once was, but now is no more. And he is yet to come. Can you, can you get that? Let, let me read that again. He said, he's going to, the, 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 he said, and the inhabitants of the earth whose names are not been recorded, whose names has not been recorded. Let me put it again, highlight that. In the book of life, from the foundation of the world, will be astonished. Why are they going to be astonished? When they look upon the beast, at this beast, because he, I put the highlight, because he, that beast, once was, but now is no more, and he is yet to come. Hmm. So I gave you some of that. Okay, we almost there. We're gonna got this last page here. Okay, this call this calls for the minds of consider packed with wisdom and intelligence. Okay, you don't have the knowledge of God, you ain't gonna catch on to this stuff. He said the wisdom and intelligence of God. It is something for a particular mode of thinking and judging and thoughts and feelings and purposes. Spiritual fault. And some of the spiritual folk, 
don't have understanding. They don't have knowledge of God. They have knowledge, they don't use it because they're still walking in the world, walking in the flesh. He said the seven heads. Look at it, seven heads. Let's break it down. The seven heads are seven hills upon which the woman is sitting. And they are also seven kings. Five has been for whom five whom have fallen, one still exists. Okay, so you take the five that's been fallen. He's talking about you know heads of nations. Okay, you're talking about you know you know Egypt fell, you know Assyria, and then never you know all that folk they have fallen. And now you get to what's existing. John time is who Rome. And he said, and he said, look, it's, it's right. He said the one still exists is reigning. John was under Rome, okay, who's reigning. The other seven, the seventh, he said, the other, the seventh, has not yet appeared. And when he does, and when he does arrive, it's going to be a he, folks. It ain't going to be a she. He must stay, but brief time, a little bit, a little time. Baco. Spin, spin. And as the beast that once was, yeah, yeah, beast that once was, you know. But now is no more. He himself will be the eighth, the ruler, the king, the head. But he is of the seven belonging to them, and he goes to perdition. Okay, that's why I say you got to be packed with wisdom and intelligence. Also, the ten horns that you observe are ten kings who have yet receive no royal dominion. But together they are to receive power and authority as rulers and for an hour, just for a period of time. Along with the beast, you have one world order. We get into the one world order situation, folks. That's after the church is raptured. These, if you are down here, you, you need to understand this. He said, these have one common policy, okay? One common policy, anybody who's working in the government knows about policy. And anybody who works in a business and in any kind of position, they know there's a policy, opinions, and purpose. Okay? And they deliver their power and authority to the beast. So he, they give it up to this beast. There it goes, getting into the one world order situation. And they will wage war against the lamb. Now we're coming down to wage war against the lamb. You know what's going to happen. This is a, this is going to be a quick fight. And the lamb will triumph over them for he is Lord Almighty. He's, he's, all, he's Lord Almighty Jesus of Lords and he's King of Kings. We're going to see that in chapter 19, who he is. And those with him and on his side are chosen and called elect. So people just think if you're on God's, you're on God's side, you're on Jesus' side. You are the chosen and you are the call, the elect of God, the loyal and faithful followers, okay? And then the angel said to me, the waters that you, okay, you observe, the waters, okay? Because people, it's not physical. This is not physical, it's spiritual at this point, okay? Let's, let's look at this. You observe where the heart was seated, seated, are races, multitudes, nations, Dialogue, dialects, languages. They're different languages. Okay. Okay. In the ten horns that you saw, they are the beast. They and the beast will be very ones to hate the spiritual person, the spiritual entity, this one world religion. Okay. Hate the harlot, the idolatrous woman that that prostitute, that whore, okay? That religion, that's what we're talking about, religion now. And they will make her chair, they will make her cheerless and bereaved and desolate. They will strip her and eat up her flesh because it's got to be, you got to worship just the beast alone, that, that dragon, that devil, because that's what he wants. He just turned on them. Okay, they will strip her and eat that one world religion. They will strip and eat up her flesh and utterly consume her with fire. 
for the God Almighty Jesus has put into their heart. Okay? Put into their hearts to carry out his own, okay? His own purpose by acting in harmony and surrendering to surrendering their loyal and royal power and authority to the beast until the prophetic words and the intentions and the promises of God, okay, shall be fulfilled. Because the word of God will be fulfilled, okay? And the woman you saw is herself the great city which dominates and controls the rulers and the leaders of the earth, okay? Now we're gonna get into we're gonna get into some uh, like ten minute discussion after I leave. I'm getting ready to stop this, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna unpack this this reading just a little bit. Uh, uh, my job was just to read it, but I I don't want to leave you hanging. I want to I want to make sure that you come away with some some understanding, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of who God is. Why would he the wise and stuff that I uh, that we. Sometimes we read, we say, I say, wow, that don't make sense. I, who is that person? Is that a real, is that literal, is that spiritual? You know, come on, help me here, you know? So I'm going I'm to break it down for you. And that's what some of the churches have to, I love some of them that's out there that's trying, but they don't understand themselves. So they get into their place, read letter, and then they don't get into the spiritual connotation. What's literal, what's spiritual, okay? So we're going we gonna to try to help you do that. Just a little, just not too much, but just enough until you dig. Let the Holy Spirit... To do what he do. So I'm going to stop sharing. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We, we, we lift you up. We, 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 we magnify you holy. We thank you for that reading. We thank you for that word that's true. That word is spirit. You said to those who were following, you said the word I speak is spirit. They were following you for bread and they didn't understand the thing you said. You said, eat my flesh and you know, drink my blood and they thought you was a cannibalism. You said, man must be born again. Nicodemus came back with, with some, some of the nonsense and saying, I got to get back in my mother's womb and be, you know, go through the flesh. That's how the difference between the, uh, the, the carnal Christian or even the, the, in the world, when they read this, they take it to be something that they don't understand. But when they don't understand, they get the wrong meaning. They only need, so I thank you for Open up my understanding, even though, you know, like Paul said, you know, you know, you came to earth to to uh, save sinners and I'm the chief and Paul's not chief. I am. <laughs> I tell you that now I, I, I'm greater sinner than Paul. I deal in even in the mor a morality side. Of, you know, Lord, I, you know, this flesh is something, but God is good. Uh, you know, we, you know, we lie, cheat and steal, but you still hug us and say, OK, son, stop. OK, son, daughter, stop. You know, we do all the things, you know, the world is, you know, is getting, the, um, today is getting twisted into thinking people think that you're doing something like that and you're not. You're holy and righteous. And we thank you and we praise you for, for being tolerant with your sons and uh, your daughters. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're gonna try to unpack some of this because a lot of this is a lot, you know. We, you know, he's talking about the final call now. He's already poured out his bowls. He already did the trumpets and the seals, and we already saw that in chapter the seals was in chapter six, broken open the seals, he blew the trumpet, chapter eight, and then he seven bowls in chapter 16. He said it's done. Okay, so we will break, you know, I want my, my, my grand to understand this when she get old enough to uh, try to say, what is this stomach? Chapter 17 deals with the, the spiritual Babylon, the world religion, which means spiritual Babylon, which is talking about the world religious system. Chapter 18, they kind of parallel. They're going to work. They're going to run linked together. I'm going to link them. You know, that, and next week I'm going to link them because chapter 18 deal with the commercial Babylon. You got the religious and the commercial. I keep telling you that's political and you got the false prophet. You know, it's the, it's the world system. Okay. Religious system is false. Then you got uh, just what chapter 17 is about that whore, that high harlot. She's a whore. She's a harlot. She's a prostitute. Okay, she's not a literal woman. She's talking about it's a system. 
And then next week, the world political economic system, the headquarters, it's going to be headquarters. Uh, you know, some people say it's, you know, my thought is it's it's going, uh, the, the Bible say, and we're going to get try to get some, and we're going to get you some scriptures next week. Lebanon, I mean, Babylon is going to be rebuilt. You saw, you remember Babylon, uh, you remember back when um, Saddam Hussein, you know, when the Iraq war, you know, he rushed over. He was rebuilding Babylon then. You know, he was, he was, it's a place, it's outside of Iraq. He was rebuilding that. You know, he had, a, he, he had even had a coin. On one side of the coin, it was Nebuchadnezzar, and on the other side of the coin was his picture. He was going, you know, and he had the Iran under control. You know, he, you know, Babylon was one of the seven wonders of the world back in Nebuchadnezzar days. And yeah, come on, folks. That's his historical stuff. So uh, chapter 17, the world moves toward one world religious system. Right now, you got a lot of religions out there. You got the major religions of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Those are the ma three major religions, but you got a lot of other little ones too. But, you know, Islam is your... Right now, it's almost overtaking Christianity around the world, you know. So we're gonna get into that a little bit too. Babylon is a little, it's you know, it's mentioned over. Uh, yeah, I I believe, and uh, from from my spiritual, not only spiritual teaching, and from my my the spirit of God, I believe He told me it's gonna be rebuilt. It's it's in the Word. It's gonna be rebuilt. It's, it's mentioned 300 times in the Bible, but in Revelation, it's mentioned about in 42 different verses, okay? Referred to, uh, out of 400 verses in Revelation, uh, it's mentioned like four, like 40 sometimes uh, is mentioned So in, 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 in Revelation. Babylon is located about 55 miles outside of Iraq. I'm giving you some little historical stuff. And, and the glory days of King Gennesar is considered the seventh wonder of the ancient world, seven, seven wonders, you know. In the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 51, 60, God said he was going to destroy it. it. It was a city they believed could not be destroyed, okay? The city walls was 34, 35 stories high, the city walls. And they had, uh, and, and it was 87 feet thick. Wow. So it was impenetrable. That's what they thought. But God is talking Jeremiah, it was going to fall. And then in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapters 40, uh, 5 through 70, 150 years before, he talked 150 years before uh, God said in detail how it was going to fall and that King Cyrus, you know, he, he called the name of the Cyrus 150 years before he was born. So that's how, how you... That's people talking about they prophesied. Oh, I don't know. You seem like, you know, come on, they're not a prophet. Come on, folks. Come on. But this prophecy, okay, uh, Cyrus would overtake the city of Babylon and, and uh, you know, and he did it in a unique way because they even had the Euphrates River surrounded, so you couldn't get to it. So what he did, he built a dam and uh, he, the water dried up, and then he marched out without a, they call a shot, a one single, he took it over. And one swoop, you know, without even a bullet or arrow being thrown, you know, it was that quick. Okay. And it was taken over, Babylon was taken over uh, in October. October is one of these months, isn't it like everything crazy go to in October? And I was born October 22nd. So October 12, 539 BC, Babylon fell. You know, that 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 city, that, that ancient city of Babylon, uh, it fell. That Nebuchadnezzar you know, thought that and all these guys thought that it was impenetrable. Now by God is telling, now God is telling us in Revelation, there's gonna be a rebuild. That great city. Okay will be rebuilt. Saddam Hussein, I told you, he, he tried to rebuild. He had a coin. I told you about that. Okay. You know, he's even built the palace that he was building that, you know, our troops was in it. You know, when they, when he, they found him in that little dirt hole and they took him out and hung him. You know, you gotta, it, 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 it costs $500 million. 
That was going to be his palace. He thought he was going to be the one. He was going to bring it back to his old glory. Okay. So it, it, it represents, uh, like I say, the spirit, the religious system. Chapter 18 is going to be represented economics as the Babylon. So chapter 10 is three. You know, we talk about the tribulation, the first three and a half years. That's when I believe it's going to be rebuilt. That's why the temple is going to be rebuilt. The Jerusalem temple is going to be built. You know, the woman is called a harlot, prostitute, you know, in chapter, you know, three times, 17, one, uh, the verse, the 15th verse, and the 16th verse. And her titles, mystery, you know, what the abomination are. You see, the, what do the women, the woman represents false religion, okay, that rises back with the Antichrist to seduce nations. False religions, okay. There's only one true. We can't all oh, Christianity. Islam, Judaism, it's, come on. Judaism, Christianity is, uh, Judaism is the old and the, and the Christianity is, is the new. And that use both, Judaism and both, but under Jesus Christ. We still got Judaism, they still, their eyes are still being blinded over there. They don't understand. So they still operating under the old system that they don't even know that they operate on. A lot of them are atheists. And I'll say, oh, okay, I can't understand that. They just go through the religious letter, a lot of them. But you got some Jews for Jesus. You know, you got the, uh, he, he, uh, God always gets a remnant. He's not going, because he said, it's, it's, you know, is you're going to be saved, okay? So uh, that's, the, that's the key. Okay, we're going to get into this. Let's look at, you got, and other, understand what's going on here. Uh, you got to go back historically to chapter 10 of um, the background of Babylon. You know, you had Nimrod, great warrior, and all this other stuff. You got to understand, but it was, Nimrod wasn't a great warrior in terms of he, he loved God. No, he didn't. He was against God. Okay, he was rebellious. He rebelled before God against the Lord. He was in opposition to God. Okay? He was in opposition to God. Okay? So Nimrod, uh, you know, he, he he dealt with that thing called Bab Babel, Babel. It wasn't Babylon in the Babel, you know, confusion. Now you go to chapter 11, those are some of his descendants. You read that. If you go to chapter, you read 11, 1 through 9, you're going to see, I want you to highlight three things, like top, of, top is in heaven, make names for ourselves. Not You never notice that make names for ourselves, not names of God. And their sons, sons of men had built, people were one, and then the Lord scattered them. Those two chapters is really, that can, even in their confusion, they were one. Unity, opposition to God, okay? And all the cults, all the cults that we know today, and all of it, like even the constellations and zodiacs and astrology, all the cult, cult worship began way back in chapter 11. It began there. Okay. So you got to tell, really got to tell the two cities. You got Jerusalem on one hand and Babylon on the other end. It foretells the two cities. Jerusalem represents God and peace. Babylon gonna rep is represent Antichrist and confusion. Okay. And then you, you read Jeremiah. A lot of people like read Jeremiah. We talk about the queen of heaven. There's some legends back there I'm not going to get into. Uh, and you remember, let's go, 19, 19, in the 1980s, I think 1981, Iraq was secretly building a nuclear bomb. Okay, a nuclear. They had a nuclear raptor. They were getting ready. They were trying to do it. And in 19, uh, and they, they call it, what this legend called T Tamus. In 1981, in June 1981, it was destroyed. Israel destroyed. They flew low and destroyed it because Israel ain't gonna let nobody get no uh, atomic bomb. Not before the true, not before the true legend period. You ain't getting nothing. I don't care what the U.S. I don't care what the world say. Israel say unless I, you ain't getting. Folk over there, you crazy? You ain't getting no nuclear bomb. I got a nuclear bomb. You ain't getting one. You know, that's the bottom line. Okay. Babylon is the birthplace of false religion. Okay. We're going to go on that. And so we're going to go line by line real quick now. 
everything is moving toward one religion. Everybody's saying, you see it on their little tags on the car. Can't we all get along? And then they put all these little religious signs together. It, one day, yeah, y'all going to put that together for a little, little while. And that's what they were talking about. So verse one, he said, she who sits on many waters, the 1750 represents sea of humanity. Okay, global influence. Just put global influence. You take a note, say global influence, verse one. Then uh, they said, the inhabitants of the earth was made drunk with her blood, verse two. You know, drunk with her wine, fornication. That represents false religion, which is a spiritual adultery. Okay, just put false religion, uh, verse two, false religion, which is spiritual adultery. Then let's look at uh, verse three, sitting, the scarlet, sitting on the scarlet beast, the road to prominence with the Antichrist. This person, this religion, you remember I'm, we talk, we're going to have uh, a religious so they can deal with the people. Then you're going to have political systems going to deal with the power things uh, of leaderships, uh, governments. Okay. She is arrayed with purple, scarlet, and adorned with gold, precious. You know, silver is not in there. It's dealing with, associated with wealth and royalty. Okay. It's going to be a rich, one of these rich religions, you know. Yeah, that's why all these, these folks, you know, yeah, I leave it alone. She was drunk with the blood of the saints to promote through. See, and that's why people make, making people think it's going to be Islam, because Islam loved it. You know, all these folks in the name of Islam, name of Allah, and all this other stuff. They're killing people like that. And they, they, they promote it through violence against the believers. I don't know. It's going to be something other. It's going to be more than just Islam at the time. Going to do that. And they're going to say, well, Christians do that? No. Well, two Christians don't. We are martyred for our, you know, I know you, they try to take, we don't take, put bombs on us and then go and boom. We don't do that. that that's not a Christian. We don't. We'll, we'll sit up there and let you martyr us for our faith. We'll let you chop off a head like they did Paul. You let them get, kill all the Christians or they burn under Nero. We, were pat we, we don't do that. We don't do stuff like that. You know, we don't say we're going to heaven because we're blowing up 20 people. Well, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to blow you up. We don't do that. That That's not Christianity. If somebody says Christianity, they say, no, no, no. That's not what I read. Jesus, he, like a lamb of slaw, he went, he went, they beat him. That's what the cross is about. Okay, that's what the cross is about. Number nine, verse nine, she sits on, he sits on seven mountains which are seven kings associated with a political system. Okay? They were running simultaneously. She sits on seven mountains. Okay. Now, verse 10, he said, let's break it down. Okay. There are also seven kings. He said five have fallen. Five fallen. Five kings fallen is Egypt, Syria, Babylon, ba Babylonia, Massive, uh, Mia, Persian, and Greece. Those are all in Paul Day. Oh, he was at Rome. Okay, one is. Okay, that's wrong. Then he said the others have not yet come. And, and he used the word 10 nation, 10 horns, said, you know, authority. It's a nation, 10 configuration gone. I don't know how they're going to do it because I'm not going to be here. It's going to be like a confederation that includes the Antichrist and the rulers. For a little, they're gonna rule for rules for a little while until they give their power full control over to this one. Me, Hitler tried to do it over there. I'll give you an example Hitler tried to do it in Europe, he tried to be that one leader, and he was gonna wipe out and say, All oh, y'all gonna follow under Hitler. And let's see, that was a type, okay? You know, you, these guys around there are types, they're small, little antichrist killing people. But it's going to come. There's going to be a confederation. I don't know how they're going to break it down. You're going to have to follow it. You have, it's going to be, and they're going to give their power over to this one leader. And that's why they're talking about one world order. They try to do it in uh, Europe. You know, they follow the European Union and then Brexit. You know, Britain didn't go along with the program. So they got to still get... Britain to come along with the program and they it's yeah, it's I don't know how, but you got you see on the news talking about G10 or G7, you know, and one, you know, one gonna be the okay, we'll leave that alone. That's how it's gonna be. 
Then he, he said, Paul, and they gonna come against Jesus. Jesus gonna be on the earth. Him and his foot, him and us gonna come back. Soldiers, we are soldiers. We come back, and, and Jesus uh, just destroy them in a matter. I think, and in in, it's gonna be a quick. Boom. It ain't gonna be a quick second. It's gonna be over. That's Armageddon peace right there. Versus, you know, what he's gonna do. Jesus wins. Verse fourteen. Then uh, verses 16, 17, and 18, you're dealing with the beast. The ten horns will hate the harlot. He's got to get rid of her. He got to get rid of this one world religion. You know, he's got, you got to worship me. That's the devil. You got to worship me. I want to be worshiped. I don't want all these other, I don't want no one. I want, I want complete worship. He, he, he sits in the temple. He want to be God. He gonna, God going to let him be God for one second. Then he's going he gonna, he gonna to get rid of him. Okay, the beast, the ten horns, he hates the harlot and they brings her to ruin and they give their kingdom to the beast. They overthrow and they replace so the Antichrist will rule and is worship. Okay, God put it into their heart and their mind and be one, do it. Okay, Jesus said something a long time. He said in, in uh, Matthew 16 27, What if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Well, you know, what have you gained? What would you get in place of your soul? All those sick people who took the mark, they gave, they gave their soul to sign. What, what, why would you do that? What would you do? What, you know, what are you doing? And then Proverbs 30, I want you to read eight through nine. It's, it's really, that's a prayer. You know, don't, don't, don't give me too much. Or don't give me too little. You know, don't give me nothing. Don't give me too much. Or don't give me too little. Because if you give me too much, I might say, I don't need you. You give me too little. Yeah. Or you make me poverty. And promise, and then I'll probably curse you. He said, just give me enough. And I know you'll take care of me, Lord. That's a good prayer. You should pray that. You know. But I don't, you know, I this this is this is power chapter. You understand this chapter? Because now we're gonna get into the chapter, the economic systems, that one system. Okay. I get, you know, because I'm I, at work, it's, it's, and then I leave you with this at work is it's funny, you know, because we deal, you know, when you deal with systems. Uh, Jesus come back, world systems. It's a world system. And I, when I picked that up, I said, it's a system. Computer systems. Systems. And when I was an IT guy, he said, uh, you know, one time he said, uh, you know, make sure you cut on a demon. What? What's running the system was a demon. And you read in the Bible, it said, Prince and Power Air. Yeah. Mm. It makes you say, mm. Mm -mm. one person said, you don't preach like, you don't do what most, most of these other preachers do. I said, no, I don't. The guy got, I got to walk. I do what God, I love my brothers and sisters. You know, I always ask that stuff, you know, I say, but you got to, I said, in order for me to, I said, I can't. I can't give you anything until, I, you know, I can't fry you until I catch you. I'm not out there. You know, I might be a little unorthodox, but it's the word. You know, John King, blah, 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 you know, he didn't get everybody, but he, he just, he just, he just hit, he just, that was his mission. God gave my mission. I took my mission. I'm not looking at man. I'm looking at what God said. And that what and it's, he's in a book. That's why he got several different went to certain people. Paul had to go. Peter went to the to Jews. Paul went to the Gentile. And even Paul got some confusion at some time. He wasn't confused, but he 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 got it was called humble. He had to suffer. Because God, God is God means we say He's not, He don't want any anybody to perish. He wants them to come to repentance. You're not sinless, but you're blameless. Only was one sinless, because we were all born in sin, shaped in iniquity. There's only one sinless, and if you think you might can be sinless for a while, but you might say, "Oh, you got a threat come to your mind," and you might say something. Oh, but well, God put pressure on. You. Job wasn't sinless. He was blameless. Job had some self-righteousness in there at a minute there until he met God, until he met God. And God said, okay, you know, come on, Job, you wanted a, a time with me? Now you got the time with me? No, come on. 
So I'm going to stop here because God is good. I don't want to keep you. I try not to keep people more than an hour because there's a lot to take in. You should play this over and over. You should subscribe to it. And then you get it, come on your phone and just look at it. Just listen. Just listen to the words. You don't have to even listen. Listen to the words. And I'm giving you scriptures that you can go back and chew on so that you can understand. Even Daniel in chapter 12, you know, he said, Dan, he said, go away, Dan. Daniel can say, I don't understand this stuff. He said, go away, Daniel. Okay. Understanding, he said, with all getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. He said, with all getting, get understanding. And, and that'll give you the knowledge. Is that wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. God's willing. He wants to, but you won't live. You, you come back with your, your walking in the flesh. You won't, you won't listen. You won't repent. You stay with a repentant heart. Yeah, I mess up. I messed up yesterday. I got, you know, so I mess up. I I try not to mess up. I try to say, can I go a couple of days? <laughs> the next thing you know, I'm talking to somebody. I said, oh, I, I just, I was kidding, but I, that means I lie. I said, oh, Lord, you got to forget a brother, forget a son, father, you know, come on. Lord Jesus, help me. You got me. You got me on that. Sorry. You know, I, um, you know, my, I'm, I'm turned. I'm turned back to get my mind back focused on you. And I give you all the praise. Now, Sonny, he had a hip hop tape come out. And I, I came there. I said, okay, uh, I'll bite. I'll go there to meet the guy named his name was World. I said, see, and the guy who named him, who was doing the, the DJ, and I heard that's the, I said, what? And his name was Wolf. So I looked in my Bible. God gave me the name Wolf. What's, the world is lust of the eyes, worst of the flesh, and pride of life. And he's all those things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And we get we get stooped by that. And then the guy named Wolf, you know, he, you know, Wolf got those big teeth. Wolf is the one that's tearing the sheep up with his, you know, the music. I said, oh, Lord. I said, boy, you know, I remember when I was 20, I was out there. The wolf was out there. I was part of it. And that's why he put me in Ephesians too. He said, you have been quicker. Boop. I woke your little butt up. You were disobedient little something. Okay. I would tell people, read Ephesians too. You know, just he give you a, a flavor. You say about it. Okay. He give you flavor. Read the whole book. I read by I keep reading it every day. I, I read it and type it up. People can't uh, type it up because I, I, I Lord, I don't want to be fooled by these wolves and worlds and stuff. But I say, yeah, I still got some flaws. But Lord, when I want to do right, he was present. Oh, what was me? Oh my God. Who would deliver me from the body of death? That's what it is. It's a body of death. We try to clean it up. We try to mess it up. We drink. We do all these other things. They do all these other things. I say, no. She knew, but I'm gonna be out there. I'm gonna tell my talk to my brothers and sisters. I'm gonna treat them right, and I'm not gonna hurt them. They can hurt me. It's not what the Lord always told me. It's not what they do. It's what you do. I'm not gonna shy away. Jesus didn't shy away. I'm gonna do exactly. I'm trying to do exactly what He did. Uh, I mean, He's just, I'm trying to try to do. And talking about His walk, I'm gonna try to do. That's what I'm. That's what I'm striving. I'm one of those. Those Jacob guys who transformed the Israel and then keep walking sometimes as Jacob, messing up. But until I stay walking the spirit, that's power with God, prevailing power. But sometimes, you know, I said, Lord, forgive me, I'm going back here. They all did. But they love God. And that's the key. Love your God. I don't get into the Trinity and oneness stuff. I get into, and one guy said, you want this Jesus only? I said, I'm Jesus everything. Because God said, he said, this is my son, hear him. He said, I'm Jesus everything. I got Jesus, I got the Father. So on the day, on, on, on that great day, he's going to tell me. He said, well, right now I'm Jesus. I'm Yah Yahshua. He came to introduce him. Haven't you seen? I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen you. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm who I am, but I love my Trinity brother. I love anybody who loves Jesus. Like he tells us, leave him alone. They leave. Should we know? Stop. Nope. Leave him alone. They know what they did. They going to come into the revelation. They follow me. Leave him alone. They doing what I, they doing, talking about me. Leave me alone. They doing some good stuff. I don't care what they shaking, like shaking like T.D. Jakes and the rest of the guy. I don't care what they doing. I'm not going to, uh, he said, those who are spiritual, restore such a one. Understand that. Those are spiritual, restore such a one. He sends us, because we don't care about it. We ain't looking at you and your theology. We're looking what God said and I say, and I'm going to restore if I say about that. I'm not going to shy away. That's what the enemy wants you to do. So you can get them along and make them think that they ain't saying, uh-uh. God said the devil can't snatch him out of my hand. They may be false. They may be talking some false stuff because of lack of understanding. But I don't uh, know. If God sent them to me, guess what? If God don't say not to go there, because I, I, I have the Holy Spirit. I, 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 he talks to me. I'm not going to do it. So you can call me a heretic. You can call me anything you want. I'm going to love until he say don't do it. It's the Holy Spirit like you told Paul, don't go over there. That's what I do. Don't go over there. If he tell me to go over there, I'm gone. I don't care what they, what they say about me. So God bless you. God keep you. God call. Say, shine on you. I'll cut you a little long, but that was, that was just Darnell. That's the good thing. I love you. And we will see. God bless you. Keep you. Call. Say, shine on you. I give you peace. See ya. Bye-bye. God bless you.